Welcome back, everyone, to more team exhibition matches. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, if you still prefer that. And we have a match between Sprung of Spartacus and 2 plus 2 is 5 and Professional. And again, the... This is... I really wish those... You know, I guess I could add that. Some kind of option to swap the positions of the names. Because I was saying before, like, no, red is not always to the right. Blue is not always to the left. This would be a situation where blue could be to the left and red could be to the right and it would make a lot more sense. I thought it was supposed to be. At least the attrition counters is correct. Or at least useful enough setup. Regardless, on to the game! So, Spartacus and Sprung starting out with Heavy Tank and Sprung. Well, 2 plus 2 starting out with nothing professional going for the Tank Fact or the Rover Assembly. My guess is they're both going to be trying to go f Oh, never mind. Sprung is going for a Rover Assembly of their own. I about to say, my guess is they're going to try to build something up, like... 2 plus 2 is 5 is focusing more on economy, not so much focusing on building up their their factory, but at the same time, not so sure. Interesting, setting up a bunch of nanoframes around the metal extractor, presumably to partly stop possible early raids, all setting just to set up a caretaker to allow that to build it for them, which is interesting. Still not sure why this is the exact strategy. I like it though, it's cool. Oh yeah, I guess I could do that. I recommend I do this. And then everything's upside down, and all the text is upside down, and the map is backwards. But yeah, I guess that would line up. That's that is fair. Thanks, Fine Step. That that is an option, but I feel like the text being upside down is gonna make everyone else confused. So Yeah. It's it's not the most option y option. There are potentially better options. Actually, what would be really nice is if the metal text was not in map space, but that's neither here nor there. I make it like Company of Heroes, where it's kind of floating above the thing. That'd be cool. But I digress. I'm getting into getting into reasons why I stopped doing dev work for this game, because there's so many little things that you don't want to... It's like, ah, because there's this and that, and the other thing is all these little bits of polish that are just a pain in the ass to implement. But that's beside the point. The point is, Smart Sprung is doing a lot of damage to the back lines. Like, 2 plus 2 is 5, losing that Caretaker, losing some of the wind generators they had built up earlier, and that is still leaving them with enough energy to spend the metal they have, mostly because of the solar plants that are right above there. But still, this Kadachi is having a pretty easy time of it, all things considered. They managed to deal loads of damage. And unfortunately, they've gone and set themselves on fire, which is not ideal. But still, this gunship plant can't build anything. And it's just kind of done. Unless some defenses come in here and stop the Kodachi completely, this gunship plant will sooner or later burn. Impossible with the solar plants as well. Nice job there. That is going to wreck the southeast side's solar collection, energy collection in general. Really give the northwest a lot of opportunities to build up here. At this point, the northwest, they've gotten quite a bit of land just off the back of this one Kodachi. And at the same time, southeast is basically forced to play defense. Running a bit of an aggressive defense, though. The Ripper and Ravager going forward... At the same time, the Kodachi has been killed, but not before getting rid of a few solar plants. Oh, is this solar plant going to live? It's not going to live. No, it's, it's done. But the gunship plant does live. So, there is at least that. Some of the power infrastructure was destroyed, and that's money that has to be re reclaimed back. But that's still 300, money rec or 300 metal reclaim. So, it's something. But yeah, at this point, the, the counterattack coming in here from Professional is finding a bit of a hard time actually getting in. Scorches are in place, and now that the gunship plant has been seen, crashers have been built up just in case. And that looks like it's not going to be a big problem yet. We'll be eventually. I'm kind of curious that 2 plus 2 is 5's approach is just build... Build the nanoframes of wind generators and then build up from there. Not a terrible idea, all things considered, since at this point Southeast doesn't need the power. But they will eventually, and the caretaker when that's up will allow that, and then of course will help build up other stuff. That's a neat idea. I mean, it's a bit risky in if you don't have a teammate that's able to cover you, so I don't expect to see it in 1v1 ever. But it is kind of a neat idea, especially if you do have a frontline presence and your opponent's not likely to go around the back and destroy all the nanoframes. And even if they do, well, that's not a whole lot of metal spent. So that's pretty clever. I like it. Unfortunately, this Scorcher's... No, it's not, no, it's not caught. There, there should be a way out of there. So I was say, unfortunately, they're caught between all of this stuff, but no, they're, they're fine. Still, though, what's really fine is Northwest's economic situation. At this point, with a quarter of the map, or actually a third of the map to their name, 34 metal on static economy alone, with a bit of overdrive to boost that. And they haven't even gotten to the geothermal plants yet. Get one of those, get Pylon set over to the rest of the metal extractors, and you've got loads of metal. You're just flush with metal at that point. 
And I should point out there that Northwest does have about 25 metal per second going into this factory, going into the tank factory, so they can easily spend what they get if they get off Reclaim or get any off of Overdrive. And at the same time, more escorts are coming in here, trying to take out 2 plus 2 is 5's commander, not finding any success, but they are at least finding an understanding of the borders. They know exactly how much Southeast has as a team, and that basically their economy is not in a great spot right now. So this should be filling Northwest with a lot of confidence. They know that their opponents do not have the money, they do not have the metal extractors, they might have reclaim and overdrive, and that's it. That's the only option. So Northwest looks like they're taking that and using that as a pretense to just attack, getting the blitzes in there. And you know there's not a whole lot they can be contested on, because again, they have more money. And at the same time, they are continuing to expand, because of course you would. You know your opponents don't have much money, thus they don't have much army, which means they can't really stop you building up. I mean, the northeast corner and the southwest corner has been taken decisively. At this point, southeast, they are able to take some reclaim and use that to at least keep themselves more or less on par, but that's only going to last for so long. Each of these reclaim patches is only going to be about 10 seconds worth with the commander on it. All things considered, northwest is having a dominating presence. And they're not really sure what southeast could do right now. The thing is, they don't have anything that's really good for crowd control. They could maybe build up a Nimbus. It'd be a, it would be a moonshot. But considering that they are dealing with a lot of small, weak forces, that's an option. There is a Crasher up, but it's not going to be nearly enough. Not for a Nimbus. Crashers have decent range, but Nimbuses, they can escape that. All things considered, though, the Northwest team, they are only ahead by about 15 medals. So there is a slight possibility, especially with the Reclaim coming in here. Professionals being pretty good about that. So there's the possibility that, built smartly and with maybe a bit of overdrive in the back lines to support it, the Southeast team could get their economy back on track, even with less territory for the time being. Obviously, that won't last for long, but yeah, like, rebuild this metal extractor, add a couple more wind generators for a bit more power. Maybe it'll work. Especially as the Northwest team is starting to excess a little bit. In terms of effective production capacity, they aren't that far ahead. Still about 15 metal or so. So Southeast, whenever they reclaim, they do have options. But again, I'm very surprised that the gunship plant has not been used to build anything. I think, like I said, the the Crashers, bit of a threat, but all things considered, there are options that would allow for crowd control that are better, that are easier to find in the gunship plant than they would be in the rover assembly. Because what do you have in the rover assembly? You have the Badgers. Well, that's okay, but it's not the best thing in the world. And maybe Impaler, if that's one at a time. The Rippers are not really good at dealing with fast units like the Blitzes when it comes to actual crowd control. Unless the Blitzes come to them, as we just saw right there, but otherwise, no. So yeah, rover gunship makes it a little bit hard to actually set up proper crowd control when your opponents do have anti-air. And at this point, that is exactly what's happening. No real crowd control has been set up. This gunship plant has essentially been doing nothing the entire game. Professional has been building up most of the army, and at this point, this is this is where it ends. Because Sprung coming in here, walking into the base with a bunch of Raptors and a handful of Rippers, there's nothing stopping them. They can just waltz right in here, smash up all the metal extractors, smash up all the defenses, smash up all the metal extractors, like, they just have the advantage in terms of HP, they have the advantage in terms of firepower, and they definitely have the advantage in terms of re reinforceability. So with this, I mean, there's no clear Hail Mary Pass coming in here from the Southeast team. And the Northwest team is excessing, but honestly, I don't think they care. They have the Caretaker coming up, and they have a bit more metal being pushed into the factories, but really, they've got plenty of units, plenty of cash, and they're able to just wreck it all the faces. So Southeast team, bit of shame there. Like I said, I don't understand why the gunship plant wasn't used at all. I could see not being using it as much, but considering they're on the back foot and they needed some kind of crowd control, it seems like the way to go. Seems like that would have been what to do, but at this point, 2 plus 2 is 5 is still not wanting to resign. I don't understand why they don't want to resign when they don't have anything to fight with. Like, what is their plan? They have the cornea. But they don't have the money to make that work. Their commander is upgraded to the point of being a strider, so that's clearly part of their idea of how to deal with this. Sprung's commander is in a bit of a tight spot. I think they're dead. <laughs> and, yep, they are indeed dead. But at this point, that's too little too late. The Southeast team has lost all their factories. They've lost, well, at least they have lost the factories they're planning to use. And they've lost everything else. I mean, it's just... 2 plus 2 is 5. I guess they figured maybe their one commander can deal with this, but no. No, it really can't. Not the entire army that's bearing down on them. This is going to be death. I admire their valiant spirit, but now that they've been spotted, 
we're just gonna see everything surround them. I mean, the factories are dead. All the power structures are dead. All the metal structures are just about dead. Once this commander goes down, there literally will be nothing to rebuild this. And that time is now, as Super Suicide 5 will be surrounded by all the blitzes. And that's gonna be a EMP setup, massive stun setup, and from there, there's gonna be torn to pieces by lightning. So with that, 2 plus 2 is 5, goes down, and so does the rest of their base. I don't see why they aren't surrendering now. They're... Are they seriously just playing the troll game? Like, you have to destroy all my base? That's really rude. Yeah, they're literally playing the you have to destroy all my base before I let you win game. I don't even understand. Well, at any rate, that was that, so... Sprung and Spartacus, good job managing to tear apart 2 plus 2 is 5 and Professional. I still think a lot of it just came down to the fact that 2 plus 2 is 5 did not build up anything. They had their factory, and it didn't do anything. And Professional, they had theirs, and it helped a bit, but they were dealing with a team that was complete. The, both the tanks and the rovers did their job, and if you look at the way that everything spread out, I mean, you have Spartacus over to the northeast, Sprung over to the southwest, kind of split it in half. They were able to defend their sides, and along the center, they were able to work together. So it worked out really well for them. Whereas in the Southeast side, it just didn't have that same value. Like, ultimately, the Southeast army value never even broke 1,600. So a bit of a shame, that. But anyway, the next match should be a lot more even. It's going to be a match between Pro Randy and Exist versus Rar and Kingstead. It's going to be on Ravaged, and it'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.